And welcome to Monday morning. Welcome to Monday morning. That's my signal to try to get Andrea up. That's right. <laughs> and I got to tell you something. Monday morning is so tough because we, the serious show that we do on Sunday, and I hope you may have had a chance to uh, listen to it, uh, is so tough physically because we get up so early on Sunday morning, especially when the season starts and we get box scores and all that stuff. Uh, how's the sound? All right, just checking it out. How's, welcome aboard, everybody. And there she comes. Now, boy, I'll tell you something. It's it's debilitating. We don't sleep on Saturday night. We spend the whole, the whole night, uh, you know, awake. If anything, I get up at 2, and uh, we, we're so anxious to do the show and make sure our notes, because we got three hours of notes to talk about, and uh, Monday morning is impossible. Good morning to everyone. Just want to make sure the sound is good. Greg, if you could give me a cue. Donkey Oki, let me know what's going on. Doug Boyle, can you hear me? King Hap. Nakahoma is here. Holy mackerel. There you go. Love you, Nakahoma, to be back in the chat room. Now we're cooking. Ohio Angels fan. Outlaw Seal, thank you for buying the draft guide. Timothy, my hooker, traveler, white sock gal. Thank you, King Hap, for buying the dress. Sounds great. Way to go. Thank you so much. Why are you trying to wake me up? Uh, because I love you. And you're wearing my favorite pajamas. <laughs> I bought her pajamas for what? For Christmas? I'm telling you, polka dots, it is absolutely awful. Anyway, uh, good morning to you all. A lot to go over, so let's not... Uh, Hang out. Let's just do it. Yeah, waves. There you go. Waves to Nakahoma. Nakahoma's back in the chat room, uh, Andy. So it's uh, it's like old home week. <laughs> Great. And by the way, uh, we will be uh, talking about King Hap and his podcast that's coming up. And hopefully King Hap can join us on a regular basis. And I think Andy is going to be King Hap's guest on uh, Wednesday, I believe. Something like that. I'll leave that up to them. But it's happening. Okay. Hope that you listen to our show on Saturday. Uh, uh, not Saturday. On Sunday. If you did miss it, uh, it's on demand. It took a little while to get on demand. But, you know, Mal Pal is here. Good morning. And one of the questions that I had on the show, Mal Pal, keep quiet, please. You may know the answer. Name the manager of the San Diego Padres. <laughs> I asked that question. I don't think anybody knew the answer. Who's the manager of the San Diego Padres? That was my question. And also, name the Red Sox, uh, the last Red Sox, other than uh, Mookie Betts or Dustin Pedroia, to lead the team in war. So those are the two trivia questions. I'll just throw them out there right away. And George is here. So now let me tell you something, a little story about George. If you missed George's show on Sunday, you're making a huge error. I mean, it's like 20 people in the chat room. That's right, the Tingler. Uh, Jace Tingler. That's right, used to be a dildo uh, in uh, in some store that I saw. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't go into stores looking for him, but, you know, Jace Tingler. Uh, the point is, is that, and I almost said that on the air on Sunday, and I would have gotten whacked, okay? It wasn't Manny. All right, good point by the traveler. Uh, yeah, I forget where I am, so it's okay. Let's get started. All right, Outlaw Seal gets it. There you go. It was Jacoby Ellsbury. Nobody knew it. Took us almost the whole show to get that answer. The whole show to get that answer. And that was the genius of the day question. All right, so let's get right to it. And um, it's going to be a good one. Guaranteed. Big trade. The big trade over the weekend. It happened. And uh, Yep, it was Emilio Pagan. <laughs> <laughs> the other trade happened this morning, uh, uh, you know, just recently. I think maybe last night or something. I don't know. Anyway, Emilio Rage traded Emilio Pagan to the Padres in exchange for Manuel Margot and a prospect named Logan Driscoll. He's a catcher, outfielder, source. Now, here's the deal. Pagan uh, appeared in 66 games, struck out 96 in 70 innings with a 2-3-1, and he uh, posted an 083 whip. Are you kidding me? So, uh, Pagan, I am told, Mark Tompkin says that uh, Pagan, uh, who saved 20 games, is, uh, of course, uh, going to add, is, is just to a great bullpen. 
but it's not going to be in saves. It's going to be Tyler Yates still getting the saves. Margot was a potential piece in the Padres' proposed trade with the Red Sox. Now Myers now will compete for time in right field and center field with Trent Grisham, Frankie Cordero, and Josh Naylor. Okay, Tommy Pham is the presumptive starter in left field. They just got him in the trade. Now they got Margot, the number one prospect in 2015. Uh, selective hitter, no question about it. Hits right-handers at a 330 uh, against lefties, and he's got. To, and they also wanted to improve their outfield defense. Remember, he stole 20 bases in 24 attempts, so uh, not too bad. Driscoll, by the way, is a second-round pick, 2019, played both right field and catcher. Now, the big question is, with Pagan, opponents hit just 206 against him in his three big league seasons. Uh, he was 14th lowest allowed and qualified by qualified relief pitchers in that category. So he's going to join. He's going to join Pomerantz, Muniz, Stamen, Stram, Kirby Yates. Not bad. Not bad. So uh, this is uh, the Padres are sneaking up. I got to tell you, they are like one year away. All right, one year away. In uh, so look in trading Pagan, the question is or the answer is who is going to be the closer in Tampa? And based upon what um, what was said by Mark Tompkin, who's been a very long time writer out there in Tampa, no surprise he feels it's going to be Nick Anderson. Uh, and, and and the reason is, I mean, Diego Castillo and, uh, look, Colin Pache. I'll tell you what, watch out for this guy Pache because uh, Tom can mention him as well. Alvarado, another option if he returns to form. And uh, Peter Fairbanks, you could be hearing a little bit from him too. But if you had to make a pick today in fantasy baseball, let's not outthink it. A lot of us thought it would be Nick Anderson, and it is. And the reason that Tompkin gave is because Nick Anderson could be sitting in the bullpen sipping iced tea and uh, <laughs> and listening to his headset, and all of a sudden he gets a call. Oh, okay. He is, as they say, cool, just like Andrea, cool, calm, and collected. Now, I understand the cool and calm. Andrea... Uh, if you want to post in the chat room, I don't know if you're in the chat room yet because I'm not there, but uh, are you collected? Okay. Not too sure. Uh, I know you're cool and calm, but are you collected? Okay. So uh, there you go. All right. Everybody's screaming. Walt Dropo was the last Dick Gurner, two first basemen. Okay. And you miss Jose Pagan. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be uh, yeah, the... <laughs> Oh, my God. So, anyway, let's talk about George for a second. Uh, Brooks is here. Good morning, Brooks. We're going to open up even today. Jay Bass has joined us. Good morning to Jay Bass. Got to see you. Let's say that Thursday night. Let's see. We've got to see Jay Bass. We're meeting him somewhere on Thursday night and somewhere and some Thursday night. SP fan as well. Good morning. So, here we go. Uh, so, George does a show on Sunday nights. You uh, will absolutely uh, learn from the show. You will think from listening to his show. You will laugh by listening to his show. And then after an hour and a half, you will wonder uh, what he said for an hour and a half. Okay? By the way, if you're having any trouble with the draft guide, uh, the link expiring, and just let us know. Andy will take care of it. We've seen one of those uh, happen. Just looking in the chat room. Mitchell Harston, good morning to you, my friend. Mitchell Harston is here. So if you're thinking about who's the closer and you got to make the pick right now, it's not Donkey Oki. Good morning to you, my friend. It is, in fact, Nick Anderson. So just wanted you to know that. You know, this whole thing with... Uh, uh, did you hear Justin Turner's remark about uh, report? He says reporters should report after the trade. After the trade, they affect too many players' lives. A lot. That's not the fault of the reporters. When you hear it, when you learn that you've been traded on Twitter, all right. I know it's pretty bad, but uh, all right. If it you happen to outlaw seal too, 
Have you been taking care of Al Lewis Seal? All right, Andy, we got to take care of this, okay? Yeah, Nick Anderson did have a nice career with the Orlando uh, Magic. Okay, so anyway, so you heard about the two trades and the whole thing. And, uh, you know, also we had a lawyer on on the show talking about the uh, uh, the lawsuit against Major League Baseball, the Red Sox, and the uh, and the Astros. It's a class action suit, but to be fair, the investigation into the Red Sox is going to find far serious, less uh, transgressions than were found with the Astros. Uh, and that ruling should come within the next week, okay? Uh, the reason, that, you know, people wonder, don't forget now, don't forget that um, the deal with uh, Peterson, you know, Arnie Marino wasn't pleased about the delay, according to the sources that I have. And he, he, you know, he's not the one. He, you know, he's not the one. He's not one person to break a deal, but he says, "Forget it, forget it. I'm not doing." It. I think he was more angry that deal sh- could still happen. All right, Jock Peterson, who was earning about seven, almost eight million dollars, he'll still be. Uh, he'll still be uh, on the Dodgers. Okay, so uh, and so will Stripling, right? Not entirely clear whether the Dodgers Angel deal will not happen. I think it's just Artie Marino grew impatient, pulled from the deal, but I do think that uh, he's going to be back. Here's another one. Major League ba- Name the Major League Baseball hitters with at least 180 stolen bases and 440 home runs and a batting average of 300. Name the th- just three of them. That's it in the history of Major League Baseball. So Pierce Johnson, Stamen, Pomerantz, uh, I'll tell you, San Diego's looking pretty good. So I think the potential order for the Dodgers looks like Mookie Betts, Muncie second, Turner third, Bellinger fourth, Seager fifth, Pollock down to sixth, Taylor seventh, uh, let's say the second baseman, whoever it is, um, Lux at some point, Will Smith at catcher. So I'm saying and I'm having a battle with some people. Having a battle, I say you got to bring down Mookie Betts. And I had the number two pick in the draft last night that we had. We had an American, American League only. Mike Trout was the first pick taken by Andrea. Great pick, Andy. Great pick. Uh, but I took the second pick. People expected me to take Mookie Betts, and I passed on him. I passed on Mookie Betts as my second. This is American League only. I wound up taking Anthony Rendon, who, in my opinion, is going to get you 125 uh, RBIs in his sleep with Mike Trout getting on base and the whole deal. I really believe that Anthony Rendon is going to hit 315, 125 uh, RBIs, uh, 35 home runs. In taking Mookie Betts, you know, he's going to hit your home runs. He's going to steal bases. But he's going to, Mookie Betts could actually come up with uh, 70 RBIs. He had 80 RBIs in two years leading off in the American League with the Red Sox. The RBI leader last year in RBIs was Acuna, and I think he had 76 or 78. And the second guy was Blackman, who had 72. There's a chance that Mookie Betts could have 65 RBIs next year. There's that chance. He could have 65 RBIs less, uh, uh, next year. All right? So I am downgrading Mookie Betts big time. Downgrading Mookie Betts. And, and in, in the trade now, they get the, not Derek Jeter, but the Jeter Downs, who automatically elevates himself to the number one prospect in the organization of the Boston Red Sox. How you doing, Nakahoma? Everybody there? <laughs> That's great, man. Uh, great chat room. Mookie could also put up one of the best fantasy. Uh, no, you know, I know the walk here, but he's batting first. Okay? Yeah, you know, batting first, Traveler. How many RBIs? Let's put it in the chat room. How many RBIs do you think Mookie Betts is going to get next year? And keep in mind, as leadoff hitters last year, Acuna led all the National League leadoff batters with 78 RBIs. Charlie Blackman was had 72. 
So how many RBIs? Everybody's saying nine.